This video provides a brief introduction to the John Darm code analysis that was introduced with Oxygen for .NET version 5.2. The John Darm code analysis provides an additional level of analysis on your application, going beyond the compiler errors or warning that you previously may have received. This will detect code smells, maintainability issues, things that maybe make your code less portable to other platforms, as well as performance issues. We'll go ahead and take a look at John Darm code analysis in action. So I have this simple little project here and we'll see that it builds fine. And if we look in the error list, there's no errors and no warnings. So let's take a look at how we turn on code analysis. Go to project properties on the build tab, scroll to the bottom here, and we turn on code analysis. There's a few options here. We can choose from a default rule set, or if we provide other rule sets, we can use those instead. We can also select a minimum severity and a minimum confidence. Now the severity is how severe of concerns do we want to have reported on. Audit's gonna give us all concerns, whereas critical is gonna only give us the most critical concerns. The confidence, on the other hand, is how confident do we want the code analysis to be before it reports the concern. So a low might result in more false positive concerns being reported, whereas requiring total confidence may result in some concerns not being reported because it wasn't high enough confidence before reporting it. Config file allows us to specify an alternative config file, and ignore file is where it's going to store the concerns we tell it to ignore. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit. So we'll go ahead and close this, and I hit build now. And you'll see we now have 10 warnings. Each of these warnings represents a concern in our source code. So the first one here is this disposable local is not guaranteed to be disposed of before the method returns. If we click on this, it's gonna bring up our fix it window with more details telling us to use the using statement or surround the local's usage with try finally block. And it tells us what the local is, is F of type file stream. And it's not disposed of at least locally. So we have options here. We can tell it to ignore this individual code analysis concern or ignore all references of this code analysis concern for the entire project. So I'm going to bring up my Solution Explorer here. And if you watch over here in the Properties folder, when I click this, you'll see a code analysis.ignore file gets added. If I go back into the Project Properties, we'll see that we've now added that code analysis ignore file in here. And if we go into the code analysis ignore file, we can see that it says this rule, we're ignoring it in this method here. And so that is how it keeps track of where to ignore it. So if you decide later you don't want to ignore it, you can just come in here and remove this, those two lines, and it will no longer be ignored anymore. So let's go ahead and fix this here. And we can do that as suggested by saying using begin and that will fix that one for us so now if I hit build we'll see that that warning is gone but we do have another concern here telling you we're calling with a file mode parameter but not a file access parameter and saying that we should use file access if we're using file mode so now if we come in here and look at the up the uh, different signatures of this there's one that takes a file access so let's go ahead and add that file access dot rewrite and of course now we hit build our warnings goes down to eight and that concern is removed so now you see the next one here is a high high so let's go ahead and take a look at that one so this is an interesting one to get here. It's telling us that the type contains visible constants and their value will be embedded into assemblies that use them instead of a reference. So what that's saying is, right here, magic number, it, since it's public and a public constant, if it's referenced in another assembly, which it can't be because it's public, then that assembly will store the actual value of 42 instead of a reference to this. So now that becomes an issue if we later change 42 without rebuilding the assemblies that reference that. So the solution to this is to change it into a public class var 
that's read only. And now watch what happens here. I get a different warning, a different concern back. And this concern saying static read only fields were found where a literal constant field could be used. And so in this case, there's two different concerns, two different rules that will appear depending on the situation. So it's higher performance to use a constant, but then you have the downside of if you change this value, it doesn't get updated. So you need to decide how it's going to be used in your application and then make the right choice. So in this case, I'm gonna to choose to go ahead and ignore this concern because I wanna have it as a read only so that I can update this value and know it will be updated in external assemblies. This one here is really one that you wanna pay attention to. It's saying this method creates an exception that is never thrown nor returned to the caller. And if you notice, there's a two here, and that's because there's two different concerns. And the second concern is saying that we're ignoring the result value, so we're ignoring what's getting created here by the new. When we satisfy the first concern, they'll both get satisfied. So what's happening is if we go to raise this exception, we're not actually raising an exception here. We're just constructing the exception class. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, raise and that's going to go ahead and raise that exception which will then prevent the work in this method from being executed so this is really important because if we don't test for a null argument on here in our testing then when it goes out into production then if there is ever a null passed it's not going to behave the way we expect it to it's still going to run this work instead of raising the null argument exception so that's a really good one to take care of Let's go ahead and jump over here to bar. So the first one this is telling us is that the type contains visible instance fields. And it should be encapsulated with a property or method. And if we look, sure enough, we're just exposing value as a variable. So we're going to change this to a property. And oxygen automatically handles all the encapsulation for that for us automatically. And if we look, there's other concerns here that are being reported. The second one is saying that the type only implements one of equals and get hash code, and it should really implement both. So if we look, sure enough, we're implementing equals, but not get hash code. And the reason is, is because typically if you're overriding equals, you're changing the way things should be compared, and get hash code is also involved in that. So it's really a good practice. If you're gonna override one, you should override both. So let's go ahead and do code completion here. And we'll just return the value. So now another concern here is saying a visible method does not check its parameters for null values. And so if this equals was called and object was null, instead of returning false, it would instead raise a null reference exception. And that's not what we want to have happen. So we're going to go ahead and add a if assigned obj then False, exit, false. All right, and so now if it's not assigned, we'll just go ahead and return false because obviously if it's null, it's not equal to this object. And then the last concern here that's being reported up here, it's saying that since we override equals object, we ought to also implement I equatable for type of this object. And then that allows us to implement another one as well, the equals for that object. So we can go ahead and do that by adding in here I equatable bar and just use the handy dandy implement interface members. There it is and we'll jump down to the implementation and add a false and otherwise we'll exit and so the great thing about this one is we can actually use other dot value because we have an, a reference to the object as its type equals value instead of just comparing its hash code which is what we did in the one that just gets that object back so this gives us a little ability to do a better comparison so go ahead and hit build. And we'll see there's only one concern left, and this is one that I'm not concerned about. It has to do with the way 
the assembly setup. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and say, ignore this individual code analysis concern. There we go, we've cleaned up all of those concerns we had in our application. A number of those concerns were showing bugs that we needed to take care of. And so this is a great opportunity for us to make our application more robust. So I recommend you turn on code analysis on your existing applications right away, start cleaning up those concerns. And then when you make a new application, turn on the code analysis first, and that way you won't have concerns propagating throughout your application during the development process.